That's right, they can go and pools were scored by another eight. Right. The Who Eat the Feed. Sponsored by Club Line. The Garland Bulls for Sharks Net. Conversion was unsuccessful. The score remains the Gullen Bulls for Sharks Men.
Allen Pools was scored by number 13, Julian Tresley, sponsored by Elemental Cafe. 14 points to do.
Thank you. 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 Thank
first half. So can we get that gear at half time? Yeah. Then I'll know which way to set up. Thanks, mate. What's your name? Nick. Nick. Thanks, Nick.
we got the rules of love to go with what we're going to eat today. The vegetarian today is men's meat. Um, and uh, just like to remind everybody, we're invited back to East Lakes and Garden following the game. I'd like to really show our appreciation to the fantastic sponsors we have in the 2019 season. No commitment. East Lakes and Garden. Raiders, Club and Garden. Test. Test, test. 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 That's what I need to work here. I should know. Test, test. Test, test. Test, test. Test, 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 test. test. One, two, three, four. Test. Test, test, test. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Testing one. You're getting me. Beautiful. I just can't get myself. Ah, that's all right. We'll get by with that, won't we? Yeah. Get on your neck. Oh yeah. What's her name? Um, I'm not sure. The meat. Oh yeah. yeah. Is it the meat? <laughs> Very close to good. Like your girlfriend, mate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I got the table this week. No table last week. You made the card. Yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten what it's like to call them local footy. Yeah. You've got to bring your own stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just saw the boys, they said they asked them what he can get up for the game. 10 minutes in. Yeah. But, um, they have to give me, uh, before they kick off yeah. in, the second, in the second half. <laughs>
Brother Brigham Young, Bulls with score goal number six, one and lead, Captain Coach, sponsored by Club One. The Gun Bulls, 20, Sharks 10.
Prize of the Sharks was scored by Sonny Tatapaza. He scored a three point two.
Spirit is now in the darkness, a belief by faith. Four, what good a belief by faith? Five, in the dark. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. So when did you want to go live? Did you want to wait? It, it'll be when the team run out, I reckon. Do you want to do much talk before, before the game? No. Or do you want to just wait until... Oh, well, I reckon wait to start, start with... You right, Cubby? We're all ready. Thank you, Pat. Commentator. No, I'm coming. Come on. <laughs> Where's Pat? the blokes right alongside you. Where's the gun? <laughs> Mate, I'm taking photos. Now, um... You want to wait until they're running out, say uh, something quickly, and then stop? Yeah, um, maybe, yeah maybe just as they're running out, you just say, you just say, give me a silence, or um, probably, uh, I'll put you pass away in the recent month.
And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The clash this afternoon here at Gungarlan Oval. It is the Belcon and Bulls up against... Uh, sorry, the Bel Belcon and Sharks up against the Gungarlan Bulls. Gungarlan Bulls. Number one is Todd Shirt. In two is Jean Pio. In three, Izzy Melly. Vata Nita Wiki. In four is Ryan Cronin. Five, Brendan Dunn. And six, Jaden Grocott. Seven, Jake Scholes. Ten is Sheen Lomax. Nine, Blake Robinson. Of the front rower in number eight, Luke Skidmore. In the back row, Alex Pettit is in 11. Number 12, Jason Brown. In 13, Dylan Haightley. On the bench, 14, Matty Fallows. 15, Cody Smith. 16 is Nick Mead. And 17, Nin Ham. For the Belcon and Sharks, we have in one, Man Mopeo. Ma in two is Tiva Madora. Three, Joe Vidvoda. Four is Tolo Aroa, five Charlie Rogers, in six Aidan Agnew. Now the halfback seven is Cameron McNamara, in number eight front row Rana Baker, his front row partner in ten the Sonny Tupula, and the hooker is number nine Matt Butts. The back row eleven Shannon McAskill, twelve is Craig Finnery, thirteen Ewan McCarroll, and then on the bench fourteen Isaac Bell. We've got 15, Keith Carberry, 17, Sam Matora, and in 18 is Davy Williams. That's how they'll line up for this afternoon's clash. There's no wind to speak of, and the sun is shining brightly. The shadow of the grandstand starts to move across the southern end of the ground, but otherwise they're playing in bright, sunny conditions here this afternoon and looking forward to a good open game of football. We will be having, once the players run onto the field, we'll have a minute silence for two of the old boys from the Gungarland Bulls. Today's their old boys' day. Two of the old boys, I'm told, passed away in uh, recent months and um, very sad for the club. So, with respect, we will be having a minute, one minute silence for those former Gungarland Bulls old boys. So very shortly, both sides will come out onto the field. We already have the referee and the two linesmen out there. We await on the teams. We'll then have the minute silence, and then the game will commence. The Gallon Bulls for the Valley's match supporting Benson. Tragically, two of our former players, Paul DeDazzle and Nick Thompson, were lost this year. Our club would like to pay tribute to those two ex players and their families. We would like everyone to be outstanding and to give a bit of silence to these people. Thank you.
Thank you very much, everyone. So the sides now taking up their positions to commence this match. Running to the northern end of Gungarland Oval is the home side, the Gungarland Bulls. And running to the southern end, Belconnen Sharks. Reserve grade was a terrific clash with a try in the final 90 seconds to level it up from the Belcon and Sharks before the successful conversion to give them a win. There's the kickoff. We're underway in first grade, and it'll be the Sharks who take first taste of the ball. That's Rana Baker. He has the first run. They move it away to the left. And that's their lock forward in McCarroll. And they'll keep forcing it that way, this time to Topola. So a couple of good solid runs just to start things as they move up towards halfway. They play it up the centre. McCaskill. Shannon McCaskill. And he'll play it. There's that many lines there. I'm not certain which one's the halfway. I think that's the one they're just short of. They put a long kick in. And it reaches down into the in gold area where Todd Sherd picks it up. Sherd makes it about eight metres back into the field of play. And the tackle came from Agnew. They'll continue to probe up the centre. The Bulls with the with the ball. And just getting familiar with a few of these players. So excuse me, but now the Bulls... Bulls take it about 22 metres out from their own line. Centre of the ground. They try and push it out, but really there was nothing happening. Now there is. That was a beautiful ball away to Pio, but he just couldn't get the legs going quick enough and he's brought down 10 short of halfway. The Bulbs probe with another settler, but this is their last. They're eight short of halfway where they'll have to kick. It'll be a big kick. I think that was Skulls who put the uh, boot in and he found the ground and Belconnen, Belconnen work it out. So getting up to play it is Madora. Madora playing on that far wing for the Sharks. And that's good defence that time. Coming from the Bulls. Charlie Rogers will have to play the ball. About 30 out from his own line. The P.O. went for a little scurry up the, up the centre of the fullback. And now away for, for Nerdy. He's about eight short of halfway. Played back. They'll swing it away to the left. And uh, a drop ball came from the Sharks. I think that might be Bell. Is it out there on the... Uh, no, in fact, it is uh, Aroa. Just lost that ball. So Bulls now get a chance. Early in the tackle count, they have crossed halfway. And they'll push it up the centre. And there's a good solid run. Came from Pettit. 40 metres out. Centre of the ground. I'll move it here to the left. Hately looking to try and line up his outside men. He had numbers there, but they just couldn't utilise it. They'll continue to probe the blind where they've got their numbers stacked. About 15 metres out, but it's one out stuff. Not creating anything for, the, uh, for those outside men. Playing the ball there was Grocott. Now they're going to give it some air. They go right across to the other side of the ground. The fullback pops a ball over the top, Sherd. I think that's the centre on the far side of the ground who's going to get up and play it. But Belcon and defence got across there quickly. It'll come back for Scholes. He puts up the kick across field and beautifully taken. Beautifully taken. And the Bulls will score. I think that might have been... No, it wasn't Pio who got to that ball. It was a great try. So the cross field kick from Scholes... By Vata Nidawaki. Izzy Meli Vata Nawaki. 
I think is how you pronounce it. And he did a great job to get up over the top from the skull's kick. Take the ball. And the Sharks had no answer for him. He just spun around then to come up with the, uh, with the try. So that's a good start for the home side, the Bulls. So the conversion, about 13 minutes, 13 metres in from touch. And Dylan Haitley has the ball placed. He's a right foot kicker. He strikes it nicely. There's no problem with that. He was never going to miss. So 6 0 the score. Six nil the score. And the Bulls take the lead early. They were outclassed here a fortnight ago. Uh, the Bulls. But uh, they've certainly turned up to play by their attitude early in this match. The kickoff from the Sharks is deep, and the Bulls are only going to make it 10 metres out from their own line in the first tackle. They'll push it across through the forwards. It's Alex Pettit playing it. Continue to probe to the left. Sharks a little bit uh, loose there, falling off tackles. And now the Bulls, oh, they've put it down. Jason Brown just couldn't handle that one. So it means a scrummel pack, 40 out from the Bulls line, and the Sharks will get the feed and terrific field position. It'll be their first chance in this match to, to show us what they've got in attack. Now, Aideen, Aideen is going to feed the scrum. That's Davey Williams. And it comes out, comes across to Finerty. He's going to play the ball about 38 metres out. They move it to the left. And Agnew, the 5'8", decides he'll have a run himself. And he makes good metres. He got the legs driving. Play back. They'll come back across a rower, looking to link up with these outside men. He's a solid boy. They can't get him to ground, although they finally do. He plays it. They're going to go to the blind side, and that's a good play. And the centre's going to have a shot at the line. And he's very close for Voda. He's just millimetres short. It's a bit messy in the play the ball area. They bring it back across the line, and it comes to McCaskill. He's only two metres short. Plays it back. Butts. It's the dummy half man. He found a runner. They just try to push it up the centre, and they're forced to play it to Pola. Just a metre out, and come to the right again. Look for the grubber kick, but not effective from Davy Williams. But was it knocked on by the Bulls? And the referee will take it out ten metres, and the scrum will pack. And the Sharks will get a wonderful opportunity to sustain this pressure. 6-0 the score. Eight minutes of play gone. Ten metres out from the Bulls line. Scrum packing. Williams put it in. Brought it out. Standing outside the scrum for Nerdy. Craig Finuti will play it. Now comes back. Good solid run. Going close was to Polar. Very close. What's the referee going to rule here? I think he'll rule a try. He does. Sonny Tapula has come up with the try. And with the conversion next to the sticks, we should have a six-all scoreline. A good stuff from the Sharks. That little mistake from the Bulls was costly. 
They defended strongly the set, but knocked the little grubber kick on from Williams. That met a scrum at the pack. Sharks got the feed, and in the end, forcing him wa his way over Sonny Tapula. He's a solid boy, and he ran hard. Came up with the first try of the afternoon for his side, the Belconnen Sharks. Having a kick at goal, Tolo Aroa. He won't miss this one. About a metre to the right of the post. No wind. Sonny Topolo pops it straight over. Oh, rather who was kicking a rower at my throat. It would have been a rower kicking for goal, sorry. A rower kicking for goal. Topolo scored the try. He's had a couple of good runs too. Already a rower. He's a very solid boy. He's going to be one player who's going to have to be watched closely. Bulls back to halfway. We've had 10 minutes of play. Now the ball taken by Mapio and he sends it on to one of his forwards in uh, Tapola. Now they work it again with a Another forward up the middle. That time it was Craig Finnery. They come across field. And that's Sam Matura out on the field. Oh, he sneaked the ball away to Mapo. And Mapo, oh, he's lost the ball in the tackle. And I think the referee might rule there was a strip in there. Oh, uh, he's blowing the whistle. And he's a weird. Well, he's ruled them inside the 10, I think. So McAskill will kick for touch. It's a good kick. Takes play about 15 metres out from the line. I charge it up the centre that time. Sonny Tapola, the try scorer, has a run. Plays it back. Comes across there for Haroa. Haroa Williams. And they keep the ball going across the back line. This was try time for Voda. Simply, they had the numbers. It was good slick passing, and Vavoda has scored about eight metres in from touch. And the Sharks have, after letting the first try in, have struck back quickly with two quick tries, showing their authority. They take the lead, 10 points to six. Some good stuff from the Sharks. Good backline movement. And Vavoda comes up with the try. So a rower from the sideline. Tolo a rower. A little bit of a delay while well, they got Tolo a football. And he's in the shadow of the grandstand. That shadow from the grandstand almost reaches halfway and it's only on the southern end of the ground. So to Taroa has the ball placed. He had no problem with his first kick. It was a simple one in front. This one much more difficult. Only three metres in from the sideline. And Tola Haroa is about to move in. Right foot kicker. He strikes it the way to the left. Just uh, pulled it across too far. It remains ten points to six in favour of the Sharks. We've had 13 and a half minutes of play. And the Bulls bring it back to halfway. This first grade clash this afternoon at Gungarland in Closed Oval in fantastic conditions for a winter's day in the nation's capital. Kick off from the Bulls. We'll go down to Mapio. 
And uh, he gives it out then to Sonny Tapola. Takes play 20 metres out from his own line. So the Sharks just probe away. Two back-to-back -back tries. They now need a good set off their own line, which is always important after scoring points. Shannon McCaskill has been involved heavily early. Had to come away to Williams. Williams got a ball back on the inside. It was a nice ball. One of the Belconnen forwards. In fact, that's 17, Madora, who went up with a good run. They're over halfway, the Sharks, but this is the last tackle. They'll go for the kick. It came through Bell. It sits up nicely from Bell. Sharks are through quickly. And they pin the Bulls about 12 metres out from their own line. On the far side of the ground. Ryan Cronin has a run. So the Bulls a bit of work to do. They're just a little bit flat-footed at the moment. The winner, winger, Pio. He, oh, he's lost the ball, Pio. He's lost that, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Bulls. The scrum will pack 20 metres out from the Bulls' line. So that's a couple of mistakes from the Bulls inside their own 20. As soon as Sharks get the scrum feed, it resulted in a try last time this happened. And now it's a wonderful opportunity for the Sharks to put their third try on the board. They've come back to back a couple of quick tries after the Bulls scored the opening try of the match and went to a 6-0 lead. It's been all Sharks since then. And this is another big opportunity. So they're 5-8. Aidan Agnew has a run. Come back to Sam Matura. Matura about 10 metres out. Play back. They'll go wide to the left. They put it through the hands. And a rower. Oh, geez, a strong boy. He's a strong boy, big uh, Tolo Aroa. And they couldn't stop him so close to the line. Tolo Aroa. And he scored in a favourable position to give himself a shot at converting his own try. Really, the defence had to stand up there on their own line. But with, with a rower, you've got to get him in numbers because he's a, he's a strong customer and he had the power. He, uh, he just had the strength and power force his way over the line. And they're out to 14 points to six. So three tries... Once the Bulls opened the match so strongly and led 6-0, it looked promising for them. But the last probably 12 or 13 minutes, the Sharks have just dominated. And they've come up with three tries, and they're doing it with a bit of ease. So Tolo Haroa is about 10 metres to the left of the post and he's going to move in that's not a difficult kick and he has no trouble with it so 16 points to six and this doesn't look good early for the Bulls they, they have really struggled in defence they looked alright with the ball that opening five resulted in six points they've had to do a lot of defence since then and they have really opened up They've opened up on the edges. They've opened up close, just off the edge of the ruck. So the kick-off goes to Williams. And Davey Williams takes it about 12 metres out from the Sharks line. And they've just been making metres at will. So I'll keep pushing it away to the left. They come back inside for Tapola. They've lost the ball. And the Bulls now get an opportunity. They're 30 metres out, 20 metres out. Second tackle. What can the Bulls put on? They need to respond to what's been happening down their own end. And this time they come away through Brown. Brown's 12 metres short of the line. They'll push to the left again. Grocott. He linked up with Fellows, and Fellows is about four metres short of the line. 
They'll go back to the open side. No, they're going to try and work a blind. The dummy half, Robinson, he went himself. There was no way through. Now they're going to swing it wide. Goes across to their lock forward and captain, Dylan Hately. Front of the sticks. Last tackle. Ball goes away to the right, to the halfback. Skulls tries to get a kick through. And it's gone over the sideline. And I think that will be a line dropout. Came off a Sharks player. And that's what the Bulls needed is a repeat set. They really hounded this blind side, but they... There was nothing really doing there, and then they went back to the right, and Scholes has got a kick in that has got them a result, the Gungahlin Bulls. Down by 16 points to six. Line drop out to come. We're 20 minutes into this match. There's the line drop out to the far side of the ground. Taking it up is Brown. Good run, Brown. So Jason Brown will play it 20 metres out from the Sharks line. They won't get better field position than this. The Bulls do. Hately. Hately goes up the centre and three of the Shark players gather together and force him back a metre. Played back for Robinson. He swings it away to his right to Skulls. He holds the ball up. He got it onto Cronin. Cronin off his right foot came inside one player. He's only nine metres short where he's forced to play the ball. Away to the left to Hately. Hately, he gives it on to Jason Brown. They try and link up on the outside. They're only metres short now, the Bulls. Really needing points to try and get themselves back into this match. Ball goes away to the right to the big man, and that's Skidmore. Skidmore's millimetres short. Last tackle. They'll swing it to the right. Goes away to Skulls, and he's put it down. Jake Skulls. He was trying to think too quick, took his eyes off the ball. What it, was he going to do on the last tackle? It was most likely a grubber to have a shot at a try or at least get a repeat set if there's no try. But in his rush, he's put the ball down. So Sharks with it now and having a tussling affair, but, but making metres. There was their winger in the Medora. They made it up to halfway. Oh, there's a lost ball as he's getting up to play it. And went, went unnoticed. It was Agnew who was getting up. Now a f forward to the side of the field. That's in 15 on there is Carberry. So they found halfway through Shannon McCaskill. Played back. They'll go away to the left. There's a kick from Bell that'll find the sideline. And that's where the scrum will pack. 18 metres out from the Bulls' line. So not a bad set from the Sharks. They worked it downfield. And they're going to force the Bulls to feed the scrum 18 metres out from their own line. So it's been quite entertaining, this opening quarter. 17 minutes out before the break. 16 points to six. It is the Sharks over the home team, the Gungahlin Bulls. Ball comes out for the Bulls from the scrum. They take play just over the 20 metre line. They work it here to the, the blind side. That's Pio, Jean Pio, 12 short of halfway. They keep probing up the centre. Front rower Skidmore, Luke Skidmore, just five short of halfway. They go across, and that's Matty Fellows. And Fellows, good run. Takes it down to 40 out from the Sharks line. They'll swing it again to the right. Goes through Hately. Oh, there's a big hit. Came from uh, Heroa. On to Skulls, and gee, Skulls felt that. He's a bit ginger. I'll go with the kick on the last of the Bulls. It goes down to Mapio. Mapio beats one, comes up, beats two, through the line, beats another one. Oh, gee, he was almost right through the uh, the team and was going to put the pedal, the foot to the pedal. And that's a fantastic run. A return of kick to bring it 10 metres short of halfway. Heroa with the ball. Almost at halfway. Now, the dummy half has a little run in Matt Buzz. Butts will play it. They're in the territory of the Bulls. Uh, Davy Williams, 
He makes a metres. They'll probe the blind side again. This time, a work it out through Medora. And he found his man on the outside. That was the centre in the Vavoda. Now a kick across field from Williams is high. Put down by the Bulls. Goes towards the sideline and goes over the sideline. So we'll see. And I'm pretty certain Sharks did not get a hand of that. Or did they? So Sharks will get the feed. No hand to it. It's the third time the Sharks have got a scrum inside that last 20 metres inside the red zone. On one occasion, they scored a try. So 50% strike rate they sit at the moment getting scrums down here in the danger zone. Bulls placed in. Comes away from the aura. Now push it away to the right-hand side. Vavoda's already got one try on the board. Has a run, three metres out. They go back across to Williams. Williams scurrying across field. But he couldn't link up. So a good set of headgear on. The ball goes across now to the big man looking for his second try in a rower. And he unloads. Now they get it to the big front rower and pushing over to Pola. To Pola. Is he over the line? They've got him millimetres short. But the dummy half will go over. And I think that was Matt Butts. Who has scored that one? Now the referee awards the try. Good work in the lead up. Had the Bulls defence at sixes and sevens, and the dummy half could see that. So Matt Butts comes up with the try that sends his side out to 20 points. Gungalum Bulls, uh, sorry. Belcon and Sharks 20, Gungarl and Bulls are 6, and we've got 13 and a half minutes of play left in this first half. And this is just about one metre to the left of the sticks. This kick, which will come from Tola Huroa. I don't think he's, uh, I don't know that he's missed one yet. Might have missed one. So the Sharks doing a great job. The lead by 20 points to six. Haroa's having a big game. The man kicking for the conversion, Tolo Haroa. Their forwards are powerful, Tapola. McCaskill and Finerdi have all been busy. Conversion is successful. 22 points to six. So the Sharks well and truly in control. And with 12 minutes to half time, you get the feeling they've probably got more points in them. There's look, possibly another try or two in them. And that would, if that did happen, that would make it near impossible for the Bulls to get back into this match. So the Bulls really need to tighten up and tighten up fast. The defence has let them down in this first half. Mapio took the kick off. He linked up with a forward. And now the Sharkies have knocked back. Well, the referees ruled knocked on. So without a great little pressure on, it was a poor pass. And the Bulls will get the scrum feed 10 metres out, a couple of metres to the right of the goalpost, and a great opportunity. They really need to salvage something in this first half. 11 minutes before the break, if they could score here, give themselves a lift. Being down 22 6, it it would give them some hope for the second half. Now, they bring it out across the back line. Not a great deal of move, uh, room to move for Jean Pio, but he's brought down about nine metres out. Well, 
They'll come back across this time for Jason Brown. Brown six metres out. Defence is strong. At 16, Mead is out in the field. Now Bulls have made a mistake. So they've wasted a golden opportunity. Caskill picked it up. And he's had to play at 12 metres out. So unfortunate for the Gungahl and Bulls there. Their handling has, has let them down. I think that's... I think that's Agnew. Is it having a run? No, in fact, that's uh, for Voda. Keep probing up the centre. And Rana Baker will play it. 35 metres out from his own line. And the referee has given a penalty for holding down. So the Sharks will get out of their own territory on the back of this penalty. He'll kick it 15 metres short of halfway. And he's going to find halfway. Sharks with the ball. Good field position now. Sam Matura takes the first hit up. 40 metres out. Ball across to Williams. Shows it. Gave a nice ball out to his, his outside men. Defence read it nicely. Getting up to play it there was uh, Finnery, Finnerty, I should say. Now playing at Haroa. Comes back, McCaskill. Found a man on his outside. Well, they're taking play 12 metres from the line, in front of the sticks. McCaskill plays it. Now work to the right. Williams was looking. He had three men on the outside. They had the numbers. This is the last. They'll go the blind side again. And a long ball. Could be a try in the corner to Charlie Rogers. They're celebrating the Sharks. Yeah, referee has ruled it. He got the ball down in time before he was crunched over the sideline. So Charlie Rogers, he's pretty happy with himself. He hasn't seen much ball out there on the right. Been a lot of play up the middle or swinging to the left and we've hardly seen Charlie Rogers. But he got an opportunity there and off a beautiful ball. He took it nicely. He got the head down and he scooted for the line in good style. And he's got it down before they bowled him over the sideline. So good work from Charlie Rogers. And Bell Connan. well, they capitalised on the Gun Garland Bulls mistake at the other end. And that's costly for the Bulls when you're in an attacking position. You turn the ball over, then you give away a penalty, and the Sharks started their set on halfway, and in the end it's come up with points. So at 26 points to six, uh, things are starting to get out of reach for the Bulls. And in saying that, I realise there is a 47 minutes of this match left. But really, the Bulls have got to tighten right up in their defence to be any chance in this match. Tolo Roa has the ball placed near the sideline. Charlie Rogers, uh, Charlie Rogers, the try scorer, was receiving treatment for a right arm injury. He was hit pretty hard as he scored the try. Tolo Roa has been striking the ball beautifully this afternoon. This is his toughest kick so far, right on the sideline. Oh no. Oh, he sprayed that. Sprayed that away badly to the right. So it'll remain 26-6. So it is the Bill Connon Sharks who are in control of this first half. Big Tolo Roa coming back on side. After uh, that kick, that was his worst kick of the afternoon. He's been very reliable and striking them beautifully. We'll forgive him for that one. So it is the Bulls, whose defence this afternoon has let them down. The kick-off going down to Mapio. He gives it on to a big forward. Gaskill, I think it was. He charged it up the centre. Work at a cross field. Centre of the ground for the Bulls. And this time McCarroll takes a run. Carroll, 20 metres short of halfway, and again they probe up the centre, the Bill Conan Sharks. 
that time, Craig Finerty. He's just fudging off the mark. They go back a metre or so, says the referee. He's done a good job this afternoon. Now, Williams linking up with his outside men, and Vavoda has put it down. So he's disappointed with himself, Vavoda. And it means that a scrum will pack 38 metres out from the Sharks' line. So, again, a good opportunity for the Bulls. But they haven't looked like capitalising on their opportunities in this uh, first half bar, that first try in the opening five. They're going to move it across the back line in their first uh, run, and Sherd, Todd Sherd, takes it 40 metres out from the Sharks' line, far side of the ground. I'll bring it back up the centre. So playing the ball, Alex Pettit. Uh, they bring it across the back line. Skulls links up with his outside man. So that might be Nimham has come onto the ground. It was. Now a run from Mead. And Nick Mead about two metres out from the Sharks line. And he's going to pick up a penalty. They're all over him. Not on, says the referee. They use kicking for goal. They need points and they need them before half time to give themselves some hope. Four minutes to the break. Bull's got an opportunity here with a full set on the line. Nimham will play it just three metres out. Sharks' defence has been good on their own line throughout this first half. Now Mead has a run from dummy half. Uh, there was no way through there. Now they're going to move it wide through Hately. Hately through the dummy and tried to use his muscle to get over. Two metres shy of the line. Nick meets the dummy half. Throws a long ball out. Scolds. He gives it on to Sherd. Sherd trying to break the tackle. I think he dropped that ball as he was tackled. He has. It's the little fumble in there. The Sharks will get the scrum feed. And again, the Bulls are guilty of when they get some field position of not completing their set to, to build up to something good that might result in points. They've had a couple of ideal positions, field positions, that is, where they, where they had a chance to get points, and it, it could have made a big difference in this match. But now breaking away is the uh, the Sharks through Vavoda. And then they'll keep it coming this way to the outside. It's the 5'8", Agnew. Aiden Agnew. He's going to play it eventually, is he? And he's gone off the mark. So the referee not standing for that this afternoon. He had to go back a metre and play it. So he's pretty strict on that rule, which is fair enough. Five short of halfway. Was Big Baker had the previous run. So Sharks with the ball. Getting up the play at McCaskill. Ball goes away to the left. Aurora will go for the kick. Rebounds off a player. Comes back to Mapio. And he gives it out to Vavoda. Proves a handful. They've got him. They'll push it up the centre through Baker. Big Rana Baker makes metres. 25 metres out from the Bulls line. They'll move it to the left. Long ball. Goes over to the centre and he's a rower. And he's going to link up with his outside men. And they'll come up with a try out there. Just trying to pick up who scored that one. I've got a feeling it may have been Agnew, the 5'8". Who got himself wide. And that's been confirmed. Aidan Agnew has scored the try. And Sharks are now 30 points. And the Bulls have been stuck on six points since the opening minutes of the match when they led 6-0. 
And it's been fair to say it's been the Sharks completely outclassing the Bulls in the last 35 minutes of this half. It's still a minute on the clock. Hello. Tola Haroa is not kicking for goal. Tola Haroa was a real handful. He's been a real handful all afternoon and he set that one up for his 5-8. You know, he nagged new to score. Oh, gee, that's a good kick. That's from the sideline, Mapio. He's popped it over from the sideline. A beautiful kick. Saman Mapio. Tell you what, he's not a bad backup kick at having your team when he can pop him over the black dot from the sideline. He's got a long, long run back because he's the fullback, but they'll give him a rest. He's not going right back to fullback position. The short kick off from the Bulls. Gets a result, but they knock on. Haitley had the ball, but slipped out of his grasp. And Sharks can start their set about 10 short of halfway. And a kick for touch. We'll see the siren blow in the first half. It is the Belconnen Sharks, 32. The Gungarland Bull, 6. So at 32-6. It is a commanding lead. They have completely controlled this first half only for the early try by the Bulls uh, it would have been a little bit of a, a bit of a white well it would have been a whitewash but anyway Sharks really stay out on the field to have a talk the Bulls have gone back to the dressing shed so I don't know what the Sharks reasoning is to stay out on the field maybe they'll go back to the shed shortly Yeah, that's where they're headed now. So the Sharks had a bit of a team bonding there, a bit of a discussion, maybe congratulating each other for leading 32 points to six. Uh, the ground announcer just saying they invite everyone back to the East Lakes Club at Gungarland. The, club, the, the latest of the three clubs in Gungarland, uh, where the, it is the home, home club for the Bulls.
Second half from Gungarland in closed oval. It is the Bill Conan Sharks, 32, leading Gungarland Bulls six points. We're waiting on the Sharks' arrival onto the field. Referee Fatu is out in the middle. He's done a great job in the first half. He's kept the game flowing. And he certainly looks fit enough to have a run himself. So we wait on the Sharks. They had a team talk on the field when the siren blew to end the first half. It was unusual. Then they resumed their position back in the sheds. They're leading 32-6. The Bulls scored the opening try to lead 6-0 in the, in the early minutes. And since then, it's been one-way traffic. The Bulls have, have made crucial errors when they get in the red zone of the Sharks, which has avoided points for them. So if they can tidy that area up, and the obvious one is their defence has let them down, and that's been pretty much across the park because the tries have come to the edge of the ruck, and also when they've... On the ball wide, the Sharks have had no problem creating space and overlaps. Now, Shannon McAskill, who's had a great first half, has the ball for the Sharks to kick off. And the Sharks just using an extra couple of minutes at the break. And the fullback, Mapio, no, he's taken the ball. He says, I want to kick off. And can he kick a ball? He's had one shot at conversion from the sideline and put it over the black dot. A P.O. He's going to put the boot to ball and start this second half. So the Bulls, what can they do in this second half to try and stop this flow of points? Alex Pettit took the first run. It goes away to Scholes. And he links up with Jason Brown. Brown's 15 short of halfway. Now, Mead fires one to Hately. Hately runs strongly. He makes play one metre in the Sharks' territory. So the set, the first set, unfolding nicely for them. They don't want to make a mistake. They go out through Fallows. And he was trying to find room for his outside men. Ball comes back. Lomax is trying to link up with his, with his men. And he found uh, in 17, Nim Ham. The Bulls will kick now on the last. It's probably not deep enough. Oh, gee, that's a good take. Matora, terrific take. Mapio has a little run, but he lost his footing. So not many metres gained there. Sharks on their own line. This time, Charlie Rogers. Plenty of defenders want to get involved, and Charlie Rogers found an end to his run pretty quickly. But they'll continue to probe up the centre. Rana Baker, he's been strong. They'll keep probing away up there. And I think that might be Matura. Now the kick from a rower. That's a great kick. He's found the sideline. And deep, I thought, well, it was close to a 40 20. But the linesman has ruled that it was about five metres short of getting inside that last 20 metres. So that's a let off for the Bulls. I'll get a scrum feed. At 20 short of halfway. Referee far too had a talk to the forwards. Scrum set. Mead came away with it, gave it to... Uh, Vata Nidawaki, and he got it on, and now the Bulls have made great metres down that far side. Ball hit the deck, but it was backwards, so it's the Bulls with a big opportunity. They come away through Matty Fallows, centre of the ground now, 15 metres out. Bulls need points early in this second half. They come away to Scholes. Scholes was looking for a runner. And he couldn't find one, the little halfback. So we'll play it eight metres short of the line. Mead fires one to the right-hand side. Ball, it went to Alex Pettit. 
Pettit tries to drive his way over the line and force it down, and they've held him up. There was about four Sharks players there. They did a good job. So Alex Pettit has been ordered back out 10 metres to play the ball. It was a strong run from Pettit. So can the Bulls do something? Mead fires one to Hately. Run round. Gives it back to Mead. Mead was looking for an inside runner. And he didn't get one. He wrestles in the tackle. Now they'll move it to Scholes. Scholes goes for a little kick. But it was a easily picked off there by Tiva Matora. But the chase was good from the Bulls and they'll get a repeat set. Well, that wasn't, wasn't the kick he wanted, but he got the result he wanted. A rep, no points, but he got a repeat set. I think it was a missed kick. It needed the grubber along the ground, but it, it stayed up at uh, waist height or a little, even a fraction higher. So Mapio will take this line drop out for the Belcon and Sharks. It's a good start to the second half from the Bulls. Scholes picks it up. Gives it to Jason Brown. Brown the first hit up. Good and strong. 18 metres out. Centre of the ground. Now Mead. He goes and works away to the left with Hately. Hately's been very busy this afternoon for the Bulls. But uh, Nimham was the man who was tackled. They'll probe away to the left through Mead. Nothing doing there. They're only five metres out. They just can't find a way across the line. They've made another mistake when they're in the red zone. And again, they come up with no result when they get into the red zone. They just failed to complete the, uh, that set, which was a repeat set, which, which gave them a good opportunity. McCarroll playing it. And this is Mapio. He's a dangerous little player. Got a good swerve on him. He's brought down about 15 short of halfway from dummy half, Fenerty. And Fenerty, he's punching those legs along and he takes play to halfway at a solid run. Played back. Ball comes away to this left-hand side. They're 45 out from the line now. And they'll keep working the blind side. It goes to a rower. He's had a wonderful game. And to row it in the fifth tackle, can't make too many metres that time. So here's the last. And they'll go across. Williams looking to link up with his outside men. Gives it to Sam Matura. He kicks downfield. And the Bulls have it. They try and keep it alive. They're going to make some metres on that far side of the ground where the centre will get up. Vata Nidawaki. Back into the to the centre that time, and it went through Matty Fellows. They keep pushing it up. Dylan Hately takes play just shy of the halfway, centre of the ground for the Bulls. Comes across to Brown. Brown links up with Scholes. There's a good run, Alex Pettit. He was almost through. Desperate tackle came from Finerty and held down. Well, that's better from the Bulls. Now they can kick for touch. Get themselves in field position again. And let's hope they can complete their set. They're down by 32 points to six. That was the halftime score. So they need definitely to be the first to score second half to hope they can mount a revival. Dylan Hately. He's been their busiest player. Back for Meade. He gave it away to Brown. Brown linked up with a man on his outside. And they keep it alive out there. Well, it was a good tackle made on Vada Nirawaki. And he's okay. He's getting to his feet. But held down again. Far too the referees not having anything. He wants a good open flowing game. And he's done a good job of refereeing this this afternoon. So he doesn't like that holding down. He knows the Bulls were in a hurry. They're searching for points. And Lim Ham was about to go on a run. But he's called it back to do it again. And it'll be the same place. And Lim Ham goes up. He goes with a strong run. Two metres short of the line. Can the Bulls find points? Away for Hately. Shows the ball. Gives it to Jason Brown. And Brown... A metre from the line, right in front of the goalposts. 
He's slow to his feet. He's a bit, he's very ginger. Now it comes away to Scholes. He gets a ball onto his uh, second rower, Alex Pettit, playing on this right side. The defence is good. Pettit's two metres from the line. Ball goes away to Mead. He got a beautiful short ball away. And I think Sheen Lomax has got over. A good run. He hit the hole, Sheen Lomax. And referee rules a try. So a lovely ball from Scholes to Sheen Lomax, the big front rower. And he used his strength to beat the defence, took a couple of players with him, and he scored eight metres to the right of the post. And the Bulls have come up with first points of this second half. Still a long way to go for them. 32 points to 10 is now the score. But that's what they needed. So the half-time break did the Bulls the world of good. Maybe the Sharks came out a little bit complacent after a rampaging first half. So Dylan Hately will take a shot for goal to convert it. He's a, a good ball player who's been very busy in this match, Dylan Hately, the captain. Has the ball placed. Probably eight metres to the right of the goal post. Straight over. 32 points to 12. So they, the Bulls face a 20-point deficit at this stage. We've still got a half an hour of football to go. So can the Bulls maintain the pressure and try and get this comeback into action? Beautiful conditions on this beautiful winter's day. The sun shining, there's no wind here at Gungarlan in closed oval. Mapio kicks off and the Bulls now may get a bit of energy in the legs. Alex Pettit, he runs across field. He gets play, 18 metres out from his own line, first tackle. The Bulls down by 20, looking to surge ahead now though. And there's a good run by one of their forwards. It was Jason Brown. They go across the back line. Jaden Grocott linked up with his outside man. He had uh, on his outside, it was Matty Fallows. They keep pushing it down that side. They're making some metres. This time, Grocott will play it. They come back towards the centre of the ground, and, and there's a drop ball again from the Bulls. They just keep letting themselves down with their handling. That was a terrific set up until that point. Off the kickoff of their try, they needed a good set. They came up with it with great metres to take play 40 metres out from Sharks' line and put it down. But they've, they've, they've got the Sharks. Now, referee Fatu had called play the ball back a couple of metres, so he asked... Aidan Agnew to go backwards. They're near halfway now, the Sharks. They know the Bulls have got a little bit of energy in the tank for this second half, so they want to arrest that situation. It's a good run again by Rana Baker. And now the kick from Tolo Aroa. And goes deep down to Sherd. Todd Sherd beats one. Then Williams has wrapped him up. We've got a Bell Connor player down. Train is just about there. Now this is a nice run here from P.O. P.O. goes through. He's gone down. Oh, he's over the sideline. It was a terrific covering tackle from a P.O. That was a great run by Jean P.O. Referee might just pull up play here. Um, I think we've got... Uh, just trying to pick up... I think that might be Aidan Agnew who's getting treatment. He's up on his feet now. But far too cool to halt the play because Aidan Agnew was down and I think he might be coming from the field. He's holding his eye. He might have got accidental poke in the eye. So, 
We're going to have a scrum packing near halfway. It'll be a shark's feed. Williams puts it in. I want it to be placed in again. So that's bad luck. Aidan Agnew has gone off to receive treatment holding his right eye. He's got a bit of a poke in the eye. Needs some attention. Now Davey Williams places the ball back in the scrum. They come away and the rower goes to his outside men. That's a real tussling tackle. There's uh, oh, geez, played well. Right, um, big number 10, Sonny Tapola. Go away to Williams. Williams had he had men on his outside with room, but he couldn't get the ball free to them. They'll keep going that way. Butts is linked up with a forward. Here's half a bust. Now the Sharks are on the roll. That was Sam Matura. He's still fighting with the defenders. Plays it back, and McAskill, he pushes up the centre. So the Sharks in prime position. The 10 metres out from the line. Centre of the ground. This is a great chance for them. Ball away. Comes to Baker. He just, he pushes hard. Rana Baker. This is the last. And I think, have they scored? It was a bit soft in the end. It was a bit soft. But it's a try to the Sharks. I think Sonny Tapola may have got it. He had a good run just earlier. Oh. And that's been confirmed. Sonny Tapola was the score scorer of that try. So 36 points to 12. Is the score line and the guest team, the Bulconnen Sharks have struck their first try for the second half. It was a spirited start of the second half from the Bulls, coming up with uh, six points. But the Sharks, once they got the ball and started to get the momentum going, they their attack has, has really proved too powerful for the Gungahlin Bulls' defence throughout this warm for a winter's day afternoon. Mapio strikes out one beautifully. Not sure why he wasn't kicking from the start. Tolo Raho did a good job. He only missed one. It must have shook his confidence. And he got Mapio up. Uh, he's had a couple of shots and he's, he's uh, struck them very well. So 38 points to 12. Sharks well and truly in control. We've got 24 minutes of this match left here at Gungahlin and closed oval. Well, the Melbourne Conan Sharks take it through Mapeo. Gives it on to his big forward, Sonny Tapola, the try scorer, who's had a great afternoon. He's a big man, he's a strong man. Now the ball away to the right hand side, and I think, I think that's Baker. Baker plays the ball. Now Butts works it to his left. For Nerti. For Nerti had a run. Now the ball's back the other way through McCaskill. Got a good pack of forwards, the Bill Conan Sharks. They're big, strong lads. And they do a good job. And now Williams bringing up the centre, Sam Matura. The two Maturas playing. Sam and Teva, the brothers. There's a little tip over the top from a rower. All he's charging through, but the bounce didn't come back to him. And the ball went to Brendan Dunn, who did a great job getting over halfway. Brendan Dunn, the winger for the Bulls, plays it back to Mead. Mead, he gives it on to Alex Pettit. No, in fact, that was Cronin. As goals goes dummy half, gives it to Haitley. Haitley up the middle of the ground and they probe to the 30 metre mark. Can the Bulls... Hang on to the ball this set and when they get to the danger zones, Coles, he got it away to Cronin and got it to his outside man and uh, Dunn. And Dunn's only about 10 metres short of the line. 
They'll spin it back the other way through skulls. Keep, keep it going out the back line. They go for a long, big cutout ball and a beautiful left step from P.O. Back in field, two metres short of the line. That was a good run. Come back for skulls again. He sends a ball away to Pettit. Pettit fires a nice long ball to Dunn. And Brendan Dunn has scored in the corner. So the Bulls have struck back. That's a good set from the Gun Garland Bulls. But they're down by 38 points to 16. And they haven't given up. They, they got smashed in the first half. It was looking very dangerous for a huge scoreline. But they lead the way for points in the second half, the Gun Garland Bulls. As we come to the halfway mark of this second half. So good effort from the Bulls. Scoring in that corner. This is going to be a very difficult attempted goal to convert it. Right on the sideline. No breeze. Sun's still shining, but the grandstand shadows have now gone across three quarters of the field. Dylan Hately has the ball placed on the sideline. He struck the last couple perfectly. He's had a wonderful game, Dylan Hately. Very busy player. So it doesn't... You know, he takes another step back. Not a big run-up for a bloke from the sideline, but he's pushed it away to the left. It was a very short run-up when he was having a kick from the sideline. Blake Robinson coming back on the field for the Gungarland Bulls. He's got that right knee heavily bandaged. And he's a bit hobbly on it. So it is the Bulls who uh, have outscored the Sharks in the opening 20 minutes of the second half after being run over in the first half. So the good effort to make this minor comeback. 38 points to 16. Uh, Mapio starts play again. The spinning kick down the middle of the ground, but it's not deep. So the Bulls will start this set 30 out from their own line. Oh, they've lost the ball. Todd Sherd had it. Now far to the referee. There's a lot of yelling going on out there. I think he may have called Todd Sherd to play it. That's what's happened. So the Sh Todd Sherd gets to play the ball. Break down the momentum of the... The good first run. So, oh, the Bulls have lost the ball. Lost it. I think it was Alex. Oh, it might have been, uh, might have been Alex Pettit, but it, I'm not a hundred percent certain. But anyway, now the Sharks get an opportunity to respond to that last try that the Bulls scored. So Sharks, they push it to the right, and that's a good run to Polar. About five metres out from the Bulls line. Sharks are in the firing position now. Comes away to Tola Huroa. He's been a strong runner of the football. He's one metre out from the line. Can the Sharks score here? They'll try and barge over through Rana Baker. And I think big Rana Baker has done the job. And far, referee Fatu says that will do for a try. Gee, it was a good, strong charge by the big man, Rana Baker. And the Sharks have hit back quickly. And they took full advantage of that mistake from the Bulls coming out of their own end after scoring a try themselves. And they've been very hard to hold out. Once they get in the danger zone... Oh, it's Sonny Tapula. I thought it was Rana Baker went over, but uh, the officials here have just informed us, everyone at the ground, it was Sonny Tapula. So my apologies to the big man. Yeah, they've got a good set of forwards, the Belconnen Sharks. They're big, they're mobile, and they're very hard to stop in that last 20 metres. And when they do roll forward and the Sharks decide to air it out, they, they have plenty of room to move then because the forwards have, have got a real roll on up the centre of the ground. 
Davey Williams. Gee, he's taken this ball back a long way, Davey Williams, but he'll have no problem kicking it. Almost in front, he took it back to the 20. And that strikes up the big 40. 40 points to 16. Bill Conan Sharks leading the Gungarland Bulls. Well, 44. I missed one somewhere. So 44. So a mistake from the Sharks from the kickoff. Means a line drop out. 44 points to 16. Belcon and Sharks in control. 16 minutes of this match remains. And the grand announcer did invite everyone back to the East Lakes Club in Gungarland, which is their, the Gungarland Bulls home base. Of course, they're the host here this afternoon. Line drop out, not a deep one. Skulls scooped it up and gave it to Jason Brown. Brown was met with vigour in that uh, defensive pattern from Bill Connor. They move it straight away to the right and it goes to Cronin. And Ryan Cronin, it's only about eight metres out where he's forced to play the ball back to Mead. And Mead, and they, they link up first through Brown. Got a nice ball to Lomax. And he's hurt. And he's about a metre shy of the line. It was a terrific run. He's, uh, he's, he's put his hand back to grab his ankle. And Shannon McGaskill was at his arm up the bell cut on Sharks forward to say, better get a trainer out here. The big fellow needs some assistance. And I think it is the left ankle that has twisted in the tackle. He was so close to scoring. He's okay. He's up on his feet, big Sheen Lomax. He's a strong big player. We just get a bit of feeling back in that left ankle. He says, I can play the ball. I'll be right, boys. One metre from the line. They're under the post. Ball comes away to Skulls. Gets a ball to Cronin. Cronin dummies. And he's brought down, and a good ball and all tackle. They'll move it back to the left. And this time, Blake Robinson stepped off his left and tried to score two metres out. Last tackle. And they'll go for the kick through Grocott. Goes across field. Oh, and up there goes Charlie. Charlie Rogers. And then he was flung to the ground. Referee far too rules. He caught it in the field of play and then was swung back into the Ingold area. It was a good job by Charlie Rogers and a good tackle means that a line dropout has been forced. So another chance for the Bulls. Mapio with the line dropout. This one goes 30 metres and it goes straight to Skulls. Gives it to Brown and Jason Brown. Beat one tackle. Beat the tackle of Topola. So Bulls go to the far side of the ground and Meade holds it up. Gave it to Grocott. Grocott's 10 out from the line. It is the Bulls with a scoring chance. Ball comes back for Meade. He's dancing with the ball. There's plenty of defenders and there's a penalty to the Bulls because the Sharks did not get back the full 10 metres or back on their line as they were required to do. So Mead, he was dancing around trying to fool the defence. Blake Robinson will take the tap. Has that right knee strapped up? The big guard. Blake Robinson gives it on to Sheen Lomax, recovered from the leg injury, has a crack of the line, half a metre short. Ball comes away. This time Scholes throws a long ball out to Pettit. Pettit, he fends with the left arm. He has a drive at the line. The defence has got him. That's Isaac Bell out there in the red headgear. Now they move the ball away. It goes to Jason Brown. He gets the legs pumping. They're only metres short. The Gungarland Bulls. A little kick through is an effective one. They'll get a repeat set here, the Bulls. And that'll do the job. Came from Blake Robinson. Little chip through and a repeat set. Although it's not points, 
It's the next best thing. The Bulls, they can hang on to the ball. There's every chance they can find points in this set. I think they might have to give it a bit more air, though. The Bulls, uh, the Sharks are pretty tight up the centre. They've got great defence. Maybe just a little bit of air. There's some men wide who have got some speed for the Bulls. Late in the tackle count. So the kickoff again, Skulls gives it away to Jason Brown. And Jason Brown takes the first hit up. Now we're going to play it down. And that's Shannon McCaskill. And he's in a bit of pain. Fair bit of pain. He's had a terrific game, Shannon McCaskill. So it's a shame for him as we, we get down to about the last 12 minutes of this match. But it might be a, I'm only guessing it could be a shoulder. But he's in a lot of pain. But he's had a terrific game, Shannon McCaskill, in the jumper number 11 for the Belcon and Sharks. Been very strong. So play, we'll just have to wait. I, and I, I've got a feeling Shannon McCaskill will be going off. This could be a shoulder problem. And I think he'll be leaving the field. He's up on his feet. Oh, he's got a bit of movement in that right arm. That's a good sign. I think he wants to stay on. It was a jarring hit he copped. As he ran in to make the big tackle. Yep. Oh, he says to the boys, I'm right to go on. He's a tough customer. He's wriggling the fingers trying to get some blood flow and some feeling. So 20 metres out. What have the Bulls got? The match is out of their reach on the scoreboard, but nonetheless they've played a good second half. Fata Nidawaki driven backwards. Ball comes back. Grocott got it away. I think that's 14 Matty Fellows out there on that far side. Ball back for Mead. Mead. He gives it on to Lomax. They come across the face of the goalpost. We're only eight metres out where Sheen Lomax is forced to play it. A slow play the ball. Ball away to Skulls. Holds it up. Gives it to Cronin. And they swarm upon him. About four of them. And that'll be the turnover. Disappointing end of the set for the Bulls. So with the turnover, the Sharks will start their set on their own line. Craig Fenerty with a run. And that might have been Baker with that run. Now away for a rower. And a rower. He's been hasn't seen much of the ball this second half. He's a powerful runner and he made good metres again there with his strength. They're searching towards halfway now, the Sharks. They've certainly uh, been slowed down a lot in this second half after that big lead at half time. And this is their last tackle, and they find halfway through Fanerty. Now there's a little knock on in there. So Bulls get an opportunity. Field position. Turnover on halfway. Bulls, middle of the ground. Jason Brown takes the first hit up. Good, strong run. In fact, it was Sheen Lomax. Oh, no, Bulls have put it down again. Gee, the hands have let them down this afternoon, the Gungarland Bulls. They had field position there, 40 out, first tackle, and come up with a mistake. Craig Fenerty plays it right in the centre of the ground. On it goes to De Pola. Sonny De Pola, he makes good metres once again. He's 12 metres over halfway. Comes back from Pio. 
He got it on, I think that's McCarroll. In fact, it was Vavoda. Ball comes away, Heroa. Gets back, oh, they put it down. A PA copped a difficult pass to take. He's put it down and the Bulls have regathered the ball. And on the far side of the ground, Pio, he's light-footed. He tried to slip around his man. He might have had some open space then. He would have been hard to catch. So the Bulls. Matty Fellow's playing at the come away towards right in the middle of the ground. Go back the other side for Mead, who was charging onto it. But the fence stood up. The 40 metres out from the line. Comes the skulls. Puts the grubber kick through. And it's dribbling into the end goal area. Will it set up? It will. And the Sharks are forced to tap it over the sideline. So a wonderful kick from Skulls has forced a line drop out. That is a tremendous kick. And, it, and the chase was great. That forced the Sharks to take no risk, but to bat it over the dead ball line and have a line drop out. We're down to the last eight minutes of this game here at Gungarland Enclosed Oval. This is the Bell Conan Sharks leading 44 points to 16 over the Gun Garland Bulls. And a line drop out from a PO. It's a fairly short one taken by Pettit. And Alex Pettit goes infield wisely. He'll play it 15 metres short of the line. So again, the Bulls are down in the danger zone. And Mead, he wanted a forward back on the inside and he got one in Jason Brown. He's only about eight metres from the line. They move it away to the left, and it goes through Skidmore. Skidmore, he's almost to the line. They hold him up. In fact, he's over the line, so referee says go back ten metres. Hello, we got a bit of a uh, few words being said. Got to go back to the ten there, uh, Luke. So Luke Skidmore plays it, and we get play underway. And the Bulls. Searching for a late consolation try. Matty Fellows plays it. Back for Mead. Off the right. Goes off the right again. Goes off the left. Back off the right. Can't find a runner. Did a lot of dancing. Looks dangerous. Now they come out through Skulls. Skulls holds it up. Oh, it gives a lovely ball away. And it's try time. I think that may have been... I think that may have been Todd Shirt who got that one. But that was a beautiful ball and good hole running. Todd Shirt, he just lined himself up with a gap, fairly wide of Skulls. So Skulls had to deliver the, the pass. It had to be precise and he had to hold it up long enough. And he did both of those things and Todd Sherd hit the line at speed so a good combination Skulls, Sherd, that's good football and the try takes them up to the 20 mark so they've never given up the Gungarland Bulls in this second half and I think that's a pretty fair achievement to get to 20 points the kick for goal will be taken by Blake Robinson it's his first shot at goal that I'm aware of this afternoon and he is a long way out. Strikes it OK, but it's going to go away to the left. Oh! Well, it, it went away to the left, but it went inside the post before it fanned out to the left. So both flags go up. That was deceiving. A good kick, Blake Robinson. 44-22. 64 points scored in the match has kept me busy. Five minutes, 50 seconds to go. Mum Mapayo brings it up to restart play again. 44-22. They're at the halfway of the Sharks scoreline now, the Bulls. So they've got points in them. And their handling this afternoon has really let them down. And their defence in that... 
uh, first half. Probably the last 20 minutes of the first half was poor, which saw the Sharks get away to a huge lead going to the break. But they've never given up, and they've pushed their own scoreline up to 22. And uh, so they've outscored the Sharks nicely in this second half. With it is Jason Brown, who's been a busy player for the Bulls. Plays it back for Mead. Mead goes back the other way, and I think he finds Skidmore. Ball away to Grocott, chip over the top. And going back, Charlie Rogers has got the ball, and the chase is good. So Rogers will play it two metres out from his own line. Mapio, the full whack, has a run while his forwards take a breather and come back slowly, and the backs try and do the hard yards early for this set. At time, it's Tiva Matora, 20 out from his own line. Ball away to Isaac Bell. Good run by Bell in the headgear. He's about 35 out from his own line. Go to the right side to Williams. Williams tries to hold it up, makes metres. Grocott got him in the end. Back for Butts. Sends it out here to a rower. Fires one down deep and wisely trapped by his feet was Brendan Dunn. And Dunn takes the first tackle. 14 metres short of halfway. The Bulls push it up through Ryan Cronin. They regroup themselves. 10 short of the halfway. Blake Robinson links up with Pio on his outside. He's come in to do a bit of the forwards work from that far wing. Played back for Scholes. Wants to work the blind side. The grubber kicked through and beautifully picked up by Tiva Matura. On his boot laces. Great pick up. He's tackled 42 metres out from the Bulls line. So we're into the last, about to go down inside the last three minutes and the Sharks have field position. Can they crack the big 50? They'll go to the right through Butts. Butts finds Charlie Rogers. And the winger is brought down, but they're in position now. Williams comes across. He's looking for a runner, Williams. There was no one there. He has to take a settle. Now they've got a numbers to the left of the Sharks. Ball comes away to McCarroll. And he's only about six metres out from the line. This is the last tackle. Carroll gets up to his feet. Plenty to say as he does. Comes out here to a rower. Little kick. Will it be too deep? It will be. Just had too much oomph on it. So the Bulls do well to survive that one. You would have backed the Sharks there. They've done a lot of defending this second half, the Sharks, and that dulls the attack. Now the Bulls, they're still anxious to keep playing. That kick will go nowhere near the sideline. It gets a nice bounce to it, and it's going along nicely. So... Mum Mapio had to go a long way back downfield, and it's a great chase by Mead. Ooh. And uh, Mapio has something to say when he gets up. Mead was aggressive. He's had a real crack this afternoon, uh, Mead, off the, uh, off the bench. Pull away this time for Nerdy. Oh, and he's driven back. The Bulls coming home strong in this match. Where were they in the first half, this type of defence? Took a long time to warm up. But they finished powerfully. Sam Matura with a run. And the Sharks would be happy to go into the sheds, I think, having they know that they've got the game won and we're coming inside the last 60 seconds. So they're just grinding it out. They'll probably kick for touch here and just try and wind that clock down. It won't find touch a rower's kick. And Brendan Dunn goes up into the defence line. He met with a strong tackle. This will be the last set of the match if they can get through it without a mistake. Todd Sherd, who's tried all afternoon, is going to play at 10 metres short of halfway 
Oh, a little chip over the top. Now it's a beauty. Picked up by Mead. And Mead is galloping away to score the try. And he deserves that try because he's had a great game of football. And that was just a beautiful chip over the top. And sorry I didn't pick up who did it. It came very unexpectedly. But it was a set move because Mead was off like a shot out of a gun. He knew it was on. Early in the tackle count, the Sharks went to sleep. And Nick Mead got a beautiful bounce. And he has run about 45, 50 metres and scored at the end of this match. Takes their score to 26 points, the Bulls. They've had a wonderful second half. And there's plenty of room for improvement in this Bulls side because they've got to get their handling right. So many times in that red zone, they let themselves down, which could have made it interesting. But it was a terrific effort overall by the Belconnen Sharks. I thought their, uh, their forward pack, there's the conversion, it's successful. So we've got a full-time scoreline of 44 points to the Sharks, the Belconnen Sharks, and 28 points to the Gungahlin Bulls. It was a high-scoring affair with uh, that 72 points scored. And it was entertaining. It was a good game of football, and it was great to see the Gungahlin Bulls lift. They dug really deep in that second half because their heads were down at halftime. They were getting smashed. And I take my hat off to the big uh, Fords of the Bill Conlon Sharks in Rana Baker, Topola, McCaskill, Fenerdy McCarroll. Uh, they were outstanding, that, that, that Ford pack. And uh, Tolo Aroa, he had a great game as well. Mun Mpio, a good team, the Bill Conlon Sharks. They deserve that win. They came here to play. They let the first try of the match in. They had a talk behind the uh, try line. And then they put the foot down and they charged all over the top of the gun, Garland Bulls, for a half hour until the siren went for the break. I forget what the score at half time was, but it was, a, it was around a 30-point lead. And it looked like it was going to be anything for the second half. But gun Garland Bulls dig, dig deep and they won the second half on points to narrow it back down. But 44 Bill Conlon Sharks, congratulations over the Gungarland Bulls 28 in an entertaining game of football played in good spirit and far to the referee. I'll take my hat off to him and his linesman who did a wonderful job here this afternoon. They kept the sides apart and uh, there was no sign of any frustration from either side. They, they copped a real good refereeing job and the crowd, although not big, got an entertaining game of football. Now, the man of the match is going to be a very difficult one. I think Sonny Topola would be running, right in the running. But, uh, I'll leave that decision up to the experts. And we'll see what they come up with. At the Sharks, it's making their way back to the sheds and of course the Gungarland Bulls, the ground announcer, Pat O'Sullivan announced that uh, they go back to their home base after the game which is the Gungarland East Lakes Club where they get together with their opposition and congratulate each other on their, uh, their game of football. So we'll just wait on the uh, man of the match Yes, Sonny Topola has got the Man of the Match award. The Bill Conan Sharks number 10. That's just been confirmed to me. And he had a wonderful game of football and I can see him still out there. He's been con congratulated by some of his family. They're even taking a photo of him. But he had a terrific game of football here this afternoon along with many of his teammates and his, uh, his forward pack around him did a tremendous job and they, they set the win up in that first half with a very powerful display and when they did send the ball out wide uh, their backs had some room to move but 
it was the forwards who paved the way for the Belconnen Sharks to visit Gungahlin Oval and take home the competition points. Well, we may have an interview coming up, hopefully with Sonny Tapola. Other than that, I think I can pretty much wrap up my duties for this afternoon. Nick has done a wonderful job with the camera work, as always. And the Bulls are still out on the ground. They're having a talk, and I think they can give themselves a pat on the back. There's a couple of areas they can work on. They're a young team, and they showed great determination in that second half to make it a good game of football. So they shouldn't uh, be too hard on themselves. Good afternoon from me, from Gundgarland Oval.